guys and welcome back to Creative Pet Keeping. My name is Kasha, I am your host and today we are going to take an inside look at a fish health and disease book. Now this is uh, titled For Koi but this actually applies to a plethora of different fish types and species. So we're going to take a look at that, learn a little more and also I'll show you how I am treating one of my betta fish who is currently having a skin issue. So let's get started. Just a quick note, if you already haven't, be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Click the little uh, subscription and a little bell. I don't know why we have to click the bell, but we have to click the bell nowadays. So I really want you to not miss out on our future fish adventures. So be sure to become a part of the Creative Critters. So here is the book that I got from Dr. Johnson. He's a fish vet. He also has a YouTube channel. I will provide a link down below where he talks about uh, different diseases, treatments, and provides you with a lot of free and awesome information. If you have goldfish, this will definitely apply to you. But if you have other types of fish, there's a lot of things that, you know, are the same over different types of fish. So for example here, he talks about the components of successful quarantine of a fish. Uh, he talks about cross contaminations. There's a lot of sea images of um, different bacterias and things you can look for under the microscope so you can reference different things. See, disease is the microscopic parasites and crustacean parasites. So there's images and descriptions of a lot of things and all the different infections. Talks about dropsy, which is definitely common in the fish keeping hobby. Um, let's look at some more stuff. Chemotherapy, which I didn't even know fish can get. And just a variety of things. There's different dosages, medicines, a lot of um, photos. It does talk about a lot of basic things, so cycling your tank, and it covers very basic beginner things and then it also covers very more advanced things on how to inject your fish, how to anesthetize a fish right here, um, and also how to use a microscope to help diagnose your fish and yeah it's pretty pretty cool when you open up your fish it tells you which parts are which so if your fish died and you want to open it up and kind of try to figure out what went wrong to prevent any future issues um, this will help you with that. So this is a pretty pretty book. Let me show you the table of contents uh, real quick. So this is the first page of the table of contents. You can pause this and kind of take a closer look at this. And then this is the second page. So this will kind of give you an idea of all the information that is in this book. And you can purchase this book on Amazon. I will provide you with an affiliate link. So you can definitely get this if that is something you are interested in. Really quick, before I forget, uh, I want to let you guys know that the clip of me treating my male betta is from yesterday before I moved my tanks, and then the clip afterwards, you're going to see why I moved my tanks. So it's a little confusing. We're going back in time, so just thought I would clear that up. So this guy is going to get treated today. Sorry for the reflection. As you can see, he's got something going on in his skin. It's really hard to tell. Let me see if I can move the light forward. Um... It could be a parasite, it could be due to temperature, sudden temperature changes because when we were moving on moving day, the fish, oh you can really see it now, the fish were exposed to uh, colder temperatures very, very briefly and he was one of the fish that were at the top of the fish baggies. So that could be it. We're going to try to figure out. So I've been talking with Dr. Eric Johnson and oh, we're going to try to use clout which is a type of medicine, oh, this guy's, the, the daddy's flaring at me. So as you can see, it's, you can't really, this is not occurring on the other males. Uh, it's hard to tell with him because he marbles, but, yep, he's definitely got something going on. So we're going to treat him, going to try to get this all sorted out. And we may have to treat the entire tank, we may not, we're going to see how it goes. So let me show you what I'm going to do. So here is my setup. I've got a bucket with uh, measurements. I pretty much uh, measured out a gallon of water and this is the tank water from the aquarium. So it's the same temperature and same water parameters. It's not going to stress him out. 
And then we're going to try to treat him with this stuff called clout. Now this does come in tablets that are for 10 gallons. So Dr. Eric, um, help me figure out how to dilute it. So I diluted it in two thirds cup water. So there it is. So there it's this really kind of grainy stuff. And I'm still going to mix it a little bit because it is a little grainy. I really want this to dissolve really well. And then what he said I can do is I can use one tablespoon of this diluted stuff in one gallon and that will be a good um, dose of this medicine for the gallon. He also recommended that I use a cup to catch the mail with so that way we don't um, injure his fins or really irritate his skin anymore since he is having some sort of skin issue. And I've used cups to catch bettas before, they're actually very efficient. The tip is to use a clear cup because if you use a uh, solid cup, the fish will more likely run away, but because it's clear they don't really see it, so they're not going to try to escape. So I really want to get this stuff really mixed and dissolved really well so that it's not really grainy anymore. And this will help ensure that this is the correct dosage and it's properly diluted. Let's see. It's starting to look a lot better. Just gonna, just gonna mix it really well. I'm just gonna put this here temporarily because I don't want this to. S I don't know if it's gonna stain. So I'm gonna get. Actually, I need to tilt this cup to get the correct measurement. So hold on. Okay, I got one tablespoon. It's like a droplet on the other side. So I'm gonna add it to the aquarium. I'm gonna use that same spoon I've been using. To just stir it. So it nicely evenly distributes in the water. And I'm just gonna wait for the water to stop spinning around like this. Because if you add your fish in right away, like already oh, mixed it, but the water as you can see is still spinning. And there's some duckweed on here to help illustrate that. What's going to happen is when you pour your fish in, your fish is going to, the current is going to move your fish. And your poor fish is just going to, you know, swirl around like in a flushing toilet. So, just going to wait for this water just to kind of stop doing that. And I guess it's nice to have the duckweed. It's helpfully illustrating. And then once this slows down, I'm going to catch my mail and add him in here. So now he is in here. As you can see, the water is still kind of spinning a tiny bit, but not enough that it's messing with him. Oh, he's checking out the duckweed. So he's going to be in here for two hours today. While he kind of enjoys hanging out and sitting in his treatment. So we'll check back in two hours. The other thing that's nice about this container versus a tank is because it's not transparent, he feels very safe in here, so he doesn't see anything around him. You can't really get spooked by anything, and it's not a really huge space either, so. As you can see, he's a little confused. He doesn't really know where he is, but he's not exactly freaking out or, or panicking. He's just kind of trying to figure, in, figure out what's going on. Many of you know there used to be a rack right here. So, do 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 do. I moved it in the closet, and you're probably wondering, Kasha, why? Why? And ignore this. This is temporary. This is because I actually wanted to set up my breeding tanks down at the bottom. And once I upgrade this light to a new light, this will be able to light up actually all three tanks. So, plus. I'll have some more beta containers. I want to add some more sponge filters that are smaller. There's a Mr. What's his name? Blueberry hanging out in there temporarily. So that's what's going to happen. Kind of having a mess. Little foot's meowing at me. So that's what's going to happen here. There might be a possibility of setting up another rack over here in the future to save space. And in regards to this area over here, and ignore the chaos because I'm still organizing everything from yesterday. I literally just moved all this last night. I think 
if I don't know if I can shift this over a little bit because if I could then I can in the future get another rack like this and put it here or I'm thinking about putting the 55 gallon right here maybe and then on the bottom either another 55 or the 30 gallon so I don't know what's gonna happen yet but that is and then you've got a beautiful sunset happening out there but that is kind of what is going on in terms of the chaos behind me. I am actually going to set up these tanks. There's finally a light that I got for these tanks. So it's all lit up. So I got to clean these. This one and this one. And I don't, I don't know where I might set this one up yet. But I got to set probably at least this one or this one up. Guppies are doing well. Endlers are doing well as well. Need to sell those as always. Um, here we have the shell dwellers and they're kind of hanging out. We've got some babies that are growing out and then the dark tannin filled female tank which we can never see because there's always all this reflection. So that's what's happening here. And then on this side, this is my temporary uh, air pump. I actually have a new air pump that I was very fortunate enough to have gotten as a gift from my dad so we're gonna be setting up that soon which is why I kind of have the temporary one set up at the moment and then there's more glare oh my gosh so much glare let's see if I can turn off some lights uh, I can also turn this off that might help a tiny bit so whoa so bright maybe this will be a little better there we go so these are the boys super glary over here I'm gonna have to figure out maybe if I close this a little bit gotta figure out this glare issue that's for sure because in the future when I film it's not gonna be fun when you see me but here's all the boys Arnold the orange male uh, raspberry samurai so they're all hanging out and then the male that I'm treating is hanging out back there and then here are the grow out koi hanging out. Uh, the little cave is flipped. I still have to organize everything. But they're looking great. They're starting to gain in size. They're doing pretty well. Really awesome. Little fishies. They're doing well. Growing pretty well. This crown tail female is actually doing very well with them, surprisingly. So she's enjoying her home. And then, of course, down here, I'm going to be setting up the two breeding tanks and then I gotta also figure out my cable situation to make sure everything is nice and safe. So this is the update on my fish.